<laughs> so welcome everybody. Hi. So uh, uh, we have a request from Rick to uh, to go over the uh, the what's that called the triple warmer smoothie? I think is what they called. I think it, it, it <laughs> the uh, um, so the idea is what we what we're looking to do is to calm the triple warmer meridians. So that uh, allows the spleen, which then allows for a um, uh, regulation, centering, uh, integration. Uh, it's a, it's an earthy energy, the spleen energy. So it uh, by the uh, triple warmer is paired with the spleen, and so it tends to suppress whenever that gets excited because of stress or whatever. It tends to to uh, take energy from the spleen meridian, which then kind of has a destabilizing effect. So if we calm the triple warmer by actually taking the energy, moving it backward in the meridians, then we allow for the spleen energy to come up and, and return to some balance. So the, a very simple exercise to, uh, to do that uh, is to put your fingertips on the center line of your forehead and press in. And uh, just notice just by doing that and feeling that it, it has an immediate effect anyway. But what you do then is you, uh, as you inhale, you, uh, you inhale as you press in. And as you exhale, you drag your fingers across your forehead to your temples. And then you inhale again and you press in. And then you drag your fingers around your ears, down your neck, to your shoulders and you press in. Inhale and as you exhale, bring it down to your heart. Okay, again. Inhale, press in. Exhale. Inhale, press in. Exhale, round the ears, down the neck and to the backs of the shoulders. Inhale, press in, and exhale to the heart. And you just pause there, just feel into that for a moment. And notice that it has an immediate calming effect. And another similar exercise we can, um, we can do, which is to bring the hand to the side of the rib cage, which is a spleen area, and the other hand on the upper arm, and that's triple warmer. And so just give yourself a hug, and then inhale through the nose, and exhale through the mouth. And again. You might wanna do it three times. And then reverse it, put the hand on the rib cage, other hand on the, out, on the outside of your arm, give yourself a hug, and inhale, and exhale. Inhale. Good. And just be there with that for a moment and just feel into how calm and centered it makes you feel. Okay, so I'm not gonna be done often. Yes, Rick. You have to go, you're on mute. Still on mute. Still on mute. <laughs> Unmute. There we go. Okay. There we uh, go. When we press, how when we press, how how hard do we press? Not not real hard. Just okay. enough to get your just enough to get your attention. There you go. Thank you. Mute me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Okay. All right. Good. So uh, uh, Marie and I are having a great conversation on Saturday, and we're kind of going over the 
the broad picture of a uh, of all this stuff that uh, and trying to get a um, uh, a broad focus on all the different elements that I've been talking about for a while and. Uh, the one thing that came up for me was a, a realization that what I've been calling the three pillars. So uh, the, up till now, uh, I've been calling the three pillars of, these are my three pillars of Kung Fu, of, of energetic cultivation uh, for any kind of internal practice, be it uh, internal martial arts, Tai Chi, Bagua, Xing Yi, anything like that, or um, like a qigong or anything, any energy cultivation exercise is three pillars and, and they are at first energetic coherence, which is to restore a state of wholeness and tensegrity, a state of coherence to the whole system and particularly to the energy that flows through that. And the quickest, the easiest way that, that I know how to do that is to just point and reach with your index fingers and feel the fingers. So, and um, uh, that's something that I've been playing with for, you know, a long time, decades now, and it's, it's, it holds up really well. It's not the only way to get coherent, but it is, I'm sure, a uh, quick way to do it and very dependable and um, requires a little, very little investment in order to make it work. The uh, central equilibrium is to align the body in such a way that you are connecting up your body with the big chi. So to review that, the central equilibrium is, so when I stand, I want to stand with the weight over the balls of my feet. And uh, I'm talking specifically that point right there, the on the big toe line, that big knobby part there. So we stand with the weight over the balls of the feet. So that's the weight on, on, the, on the big toe line, not on the outside of the foot and not in the heel. So we're lined up there. The knees are lined up over the, over the balls of the feet. And we also reach with the knee one point, which is at the crown of the head. So it's not the top of the head, but actually the point where the uh, the hair whirl, where your uh, where the uh, the different bones in your in your skull meet up, the posterior fontanelle is the uh, anatomical expression for it, and we do the reach up with that. Don't just hang from that, but you're actually extending upward. And when you do the you kind of tuck in your chin a little bit, and you align like that. When you do that you are opening to the big chi. That is, the energy comes up, the earth chi comes up through your feet, out the top of your head. The, the heaven chi comes down through the, through the uh, crown point and down through your feet, and you become part of this bigger circuit. So those are the first two pillars. The third pillar that I've been talking about is the sung kwa, that is, releasing the hip joint so that if I'm in a, in a bow stance, you know, what I do is, is I set the knee and then I release at the hip joint. So if you notice here, the, my leg doesn't move, my knee doesn't move, but my torso does. And this is the point here where it, it's happening. It's right at that, at that hip joint and go the other way also. We did this a couple of weeks ago. So we play around with, with the Sun Kwa. So, uh, the realization that I had was that it's actually uh, bigger than Sun Kwa. Sun Kwa is just one aspect of it, and that is the a more correct way of, of, of describing it would be to, to talk about uh, unkinking the hose. If we imagine that the, the energy gets blocked in any place where our alignment and is such that it creates muscular tension that holds the body in a, to hold the body in a certain place, 
then we have a kink in the hose. That is, the energy is not flowing freely. And this is easily, easily demonstrated, and I've done that in several of the other videos um, uh, in this series. And, uh, but to, I've spotted three primary places where the hose really gets kinked. And there may be others, but those, these are the three I'm working with right now. And the first one is that quaff. So that, and that's because we, when we learn how to stand up, we are pushing away from the earth. And when we're first learning to walk, you know, we're stand, we're, we're pushing away from the earth and that stays with us. And what we actually want is, ah, we want to go down and resonate with the earth, which then allows a connection, an energetic connection with the earth. So as we get there by, you know, I, I call it boom, boom, where you go boom, boom, and that releases at the quaff. So this is, this is the biggie. And uh, so if we get, you get that one, that allows for a huge amount of, of energy to come through. The, uh, the next one that I've been talking about uh, uh, is the uh, jade pillow gate. And that's right here at the base of the skull where the atlas is, the topmost vertebra goes into, where the, the spine goes into the skull and where they, they connect up there. And it, if you're standing, particularly if you're standing with your weight in your heels, there's a tendency to, to lift the chin and to kink the hose there. And that's another thing which is kind of, for a lot of us is, goes very deep and it's a very old pattern. And so as we, as we go older, we have a tendency to kind of, kind of hunch over, you get the, the turtle back and, and the, there's this sort of schlumpy uh, a posture that comes out of it, this, which collapses your energy field. So to reverse that, we reach with the knee one point and we tuck in the chin and that opens up the jade pillow gate. So here's where the central equilibrium overlaps with the with a uh, unkinking the hose uh, but there are two different points of emphasis here so uh, I like to keep uh, keep this in the category of unkinking the hose because it if you just do it you can feel there's an immediate shift in your energy when you do that so then the, the third one is something else we've been talking about a lot recently, and that is the elbow gin. So just by reaching, if I'm, if I'm my arms are just hanging down and I'm kind of, uh, my, my uh, chin's out and I'm kind of schlumpy, then there's a collapsed field. Whereas if I am in the, reaching with the knee one, and then just reach out slightly and feel my elbows, feel the weight over the balls of my feet, then I have those three different points, those three different gates, the qua, the jade pillow gate, and the shoulder gates are all open now. And if you just stand, just do that, and just, just we're just gonna stand for one minute and uh, feel into that. So keep the weight over the balls of the feet. Reach with the knee one. Relax your shoulders. Reach with your elbows slightly. And feel your index fingers. So we get the energetic coherence in there too. So you got the three pillars are are crackling right now. And it doesn't take a full minute to get the, uh, to get the effect. You get it Im immediately. But it's also one thing that, it's a thing that, that it gets amplified the more you do it. So it's not only for um, duration, I do it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half hour, whatever but also uh, frequency. How often am I able to activate these, these points? So just feel into that 
and good. So that was a minute of, uh, of doing that and just feel into your hands and you can, you can feel that. Also notice your internal state, notice the clarity of your mind, the, the calmness that comes with that. And, you know, just check your boom, boom, check your, your quad every now and then, just feel into that. And just so you don't unconsciously start holding that. So then put your right foot forward and feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and boom, boom. Feel that, good. Still reaching with the knee one and bring your arms forward a little bit. Just, just still about belt high. Your hands are about belt high, but just feel into that. Notice the field that gets generated by this simple posture. Now, shift to your back foot. Feel the, feel the ball of your left foot. Set your left knee. Boom, boom. Point, reach. And feel into that. So what we're doing is we're familiarizing ourselves with the three pillars and the effect of getting those three pillars in. We're opening the, those stuck points, those major stuck points there at the hips, at the neck, at the shoulders, and just noticing the effect that that's having. And then bring your left foot forward. Feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, Boom, boom. Point, reach, elbows. We don't have to hold this for a long time to feel the effect. But if you can, if you want to cultivate a tolerance for more chi, if you want to cultivate uh, the endurance, the ability to withstand that much energy flow, then you do it regularly, you do it uh, for a longer period of time. You know, back when I was competing, I would hold postures like this for an hour. You know, and it uh, was very effective. You got a lot of, a lot of juice that way. I think I'm doing it 10 times more efficiently now, so I don't need anywhere near the amount of, uh, of effort I used to put into it. Now sink into your right leg, boom, boom, and hold the posture there. Just notice how it doesn't take a lot to get to get a lot. And obviously, we can change, you know, the uh, positions to uh, to get a different effect. If you bring your hands up like this, you know, and let's say you you pick up the heel of your front foot and you're just standing like this, reach out with the elbows, reach with the knee one. And this is a very powerful posture. What's this one called, Valerie? <laughs> Universal post. Universal pose. There you go. And it's, it's a great one. For, for, what's that? 
<laughs> okay, good. So, and relax. Uh, have a seat. Uh, it was just, uh, we were having, Valerie was having technical difficulties with the mic. But um, yeah, uh, the Guangping Association newsletter is called the Universal Post. Right, right. I knew she'd be the one to ask. But, sure, uh, sure it's, a very, it's, a, it's a very powerful, very powerful policy, but there are lots of them. I mean, you can go pretty much any direction. And if you take those three pillars and you put them into any posture, you can amplify, you can turn any posture into a power posture immediately. Rick. I was away for 10 minutes. Could you repeat everything? <laughs> what was that, la was that last position? A uh, ball of foot, a uh, ball of right foot down, uh, left foot up, and then, yeah. the, no, what, what was it? That was called the universal post. Right, and where's the, how do you do the feet for that? Uh, so basically it's just, it's single weighted. So if you're standing, ball of foot here, you just, you just, you're, this, 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 this foot is empty. You reach uh -huh. out with your elbows. The arms are rounded. Right. right. Uh -huh. so you're like that, but you get the rest of the, uh, the three pillars in as you do that. Okay. And it's, it's a big posture. It's a power posture. It, uh, it greatly amplifies Excellent. everything. You know, Thank last you. week we were talking about the uh, the Superman posture being a uh, you know the a power posture. This is one that it's it's fun because it's so iconic. You know, when you're standing like this, you know, it, and the way that that has they actually are able to measure in that simple posture how two minutes of doing that actually changes your your endocrine system. It, it reduces cortisol, improves your uh, uh, testosterone levels, it amplifies your presence and your, uh, uh, your self-confidence, all kinds of things like that. And um, what we're doing here is we're, because that's, that's a fun posture, but it's not terribly useful in a lot of situations. But, uh, but anything else you can do, you can immediately transform it into a power posture. So, I mean, you can just be sort of just kind of hanging out, you know, but if you, if you just, oh, you're kind of all the weights in one foot here, you're, you bring your elbows out, you're like this, point your index fingers and like, oh, everything changed. It doesn't look like you, you did anything, but, but you did. You changed <laughs> it internally. You, yeah. you, this is, this is the essence of, of Kung Fu. That is, you know, you're, we are learning how to be, to embody these things and do it at will. And it doesn't require a lot of ramp up. It's not like, oh, I got to go warm up. I got to do 10 push ups before I get my. <laughs> it's like, no, no, you just. And, and any posture can become, can become a power posture like that. Does someone have a question here? Oh yeah, uh, Sandy. Yeah, I have a question, uh, Rick. So when I when I don't uh, reach with my elbows, I feel that I have to use my thumbs a little bit with with pointing with the index. So I have to use kind of uh, like a V shape to feel the coherence. So okay. when I I find out when I use the elbow gin, my thumb can relax more, and I feel like the pointing is is stronger. I don't know. If, if you can talk about the thumb at all, I don't know if the thumb, if you engage the thumb at all, or that was just what I noticed with those exercises. I, I'm a big fan of the thumb, um, you know, but in terms of, of, um, of, of energetic coherence, I've found that it actually gets in the way a little bit. It kind of disperses and it's something that, that um, uh, I've tested on occasion. Maybe I can do one right now. You want to do the, I want to do a test there, dude? So, so just show you what, uh, 
Um, it's not not a, a, a foolproof thing, but if if we get a uh, if we get Maria, she she comes out here like this and she just feels her index finger. We have a nice strong posture there. And but if she she feels with her thumb there, it it collapses the the field. I I, I think that this kind of disperses the energy a little bit to have to have two of them going. Whereas if you just unify it around the around the index finger, we have this we have this very powerful uh, condition. Thank you. So that's uh, I've tested that on a bunch of people, and it uh, it seems to work that way. So so just uh, feeling the uh, uh, I'm I, I think it's better to just go with the uh, go with the index finger in terms of, of energetic coherence, uh, but. You're right, Sandy, about the about the elbows. By unkicking the shoulders and pointing, you get this rush of chi. So um, the way I like to to think about the difference there is with energetic coherence. What you're doing is you're taking whatever you got, whatever system you've got, and you're turning it into a unified wholeness. And feeling your index fingers has a way of, of signaling the nervous system as well as the connective tissue system, reminding of your wholeness and alerting your conscious mind that something's going on. It's a, no accident that children, right before they learn to speak, they ah, 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 they point with their index finger. And it's uh, the, the, the nervous system has developed to a point where they're able to consciously direct attention so that they're able to say, oh, with their finger say that thing there. Instead of focusing on everything all at once, it's like, no, no, that. And uh, it, has, I, it has a prioritized relationship in the body mind, in the, uh, particularly in the nervous system, you get more neurons going into the index finger than all the other fingers combined, and so I think it has uh, it has a, a unifying quality. And the fact that it appears in so much of the spiritual religious iconography, it uh, I think is uh, uh, kind of telling. Also, there's so many people that you know you'll see that you know be the you know that that they hold that finger up be it. John the Baptist or Socrates or you know there, there's all kinds of, uh, of of pictures of of really smart people holding up that finger uh, but the elbows do something different which is they unkink the hose so that all that energy that's flowing through the system that gets dammed up with shoulder tension gets unlocked and goes right down and is expressed through your fingers, through your hands. Let's do some exercise. We've been looking for the three pillars again. Exercise is doing the three pillars. Well, let me see if there's any other questions here before I get back to gallery. So anybody else, uh, any other questions, thoughts uh, on this? Um, does that, that make sense to you? The uh, unkinking the hose as a, uh, you like that? Good, good, good. I think it's a, uh, I think it's a, a, a useful, it opens the door to, uh, to, to, more, to more than just limiting it to the, uh, the Sun Kwa. Um, cool, so let's, uh, uh, what I would like to do then is uh, do uh, the, uh, uh, the, those Taoist prep foundation exercises with the, uh, Sun Kwa, with the, or not Sun Kwa, with the three pillars, really emphasizing all of those as we're doing it. So uh, you stand up and uh, let's do this. Okay, so feet 50 50, weight over the balls of the feet, set your knees over the balls of the feet. Reach up with your knee one, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. Elbows. 
Reach with your fingers. Feel your index finger. Okay, so then bring your hands up, palms up. Set your elbows. So now, uh, as you turn, you're going to turn from the forearms. Notice my elbows aren't moving. I'm going to, as I turn inward, I'm going to reach with my thumbs. As I go back, I'm going to reach with my little fingers. So here we go. So, and nice and slow. I really want to feel that. So this is not just a mechanical thing. You want to feel that movement in your feet. You want to feel it in your, your whole body, but not getting stuck anywhere. There's no muscular tension. You're just rotating, feeling those, feeling your thumb, feeling your little finger as you rotate. Good. And bring the hands down, elbows up, and just feel the chi in your hands. Keep checking, boom, boom. Keep checking your three pillars. You want to get that so you're continually re-establishing them. It's not like, oh, I did it, I did it a while ago. It, it, they're, they're okay. No, no. You're reestablishing your three pillars. You're looking for central equilibrium every, every moment. Your whole body is hungry for that. Okay, so now rotate your palms up and you inhale, hands come up and exhale. Set your elbows and press down. Inhale. Rotate, exhale. Actually, there's an important part of this I've omitted as you're coming up here. As you press down, sink down. Inhale, come up, and sink down. Good, and relax. And just feel into the energy in your arms. Feel throughout your body. Boom, boom. Keep rechecking your three pillars. Feel those fingers. Uh, next one. Hand comes up the center line, reaches out. Other hand comes down, other hand comes up the center line. Turn your body as you. Each time you turn, you want to set your knee and feel your weight over the ball of your foot as you reach out. You're re releasing down into the quad as you reach out. And as we're doing this, what we're doing is bringing the water chi up from the dantian up to the heart. The fire chi reaches out and comes down and under the water comes up. So there's a, a little bit of Taoist alchemy happening here. We're creating a turbine. Arms are relaxed, reaching. Feel those elbows as you do that. Gathering that good. Bring your hands down.
Feel the heat that's being generated in your body. Good. Now, put your left foot forward, and we're just going to do um, the, the big ones. These nice long stance. And feel the ball of your right foot, set your knee, spiral down into the quad, and you're shifting into the back leg there by, by releasing into the quad, coming around and set your left knee and reach out, open the spine, and then coming down and reach, yeah. press down and reach. You're really opening the joints, opening the spine, really elongating, reaching out. Good, and put your right foot forward, nice long stance, and begin, sink and turn and reach and Back to neutral, just relax. Get your three pillars in and just allow that energy to circulate. And in, as you're doing this, by just being relaxed in this neutral posture, the energy goes where it needs to go. It allows you to repair, fix, clean out anything that needs to be done there. Good, now bring the arms out, elbows, fingers, boom, boom. Three, three pillars again. Keep your elbows set and bring your hands up. Reset your center equilibrium, your sun qua, reach with your elbows, open the jade pillow gate, feel your energetic coherence. down. Now, very slowly, bring your arms up. Feel it in your feet. Feel it throughout your body as you bring up your arms. Overhead. 
till your hands meet. And then sink down and reach up even more, really lengthening your arms. Breathe. Separate the hands, reach out with your elbows first, your wrists, your fingers. Feel the chi, feel the circulation. Now very slowly rotate your forearms. So your palms come forward, reaching with the little fingers as you rotate. Uh, inhale, spread your fingers open wide. Exhale. And then relax your hands, but keep them open. And turn back, this time reaching with your thumbs, rotating forearms from the elbows. You really want to feel everything. Get your, make sure you got your boom boom in, your sung kwa. And step in. Deep breath. Gather. And then as you exhale, push down on that plunger, get rid of the chi. So you clean it out. And just feel into the stillness. Yeah, grab a seat. Gallery view. Here we go. Mm. How'd that feel? Good. <laughs> Cranked up a little heat, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Um, a very powerful set there. If you do it with the with the three pillars, you can uh, it really uh, turns it up to 11. Good. Any questions, thoughts? Scott? I got a question, a uh, comment, and two questions. Do <laughs> them all at once? Say again? I got a, question, a comment and two questions. You want them all at once? Uh, 
I'll, I'll bow to your infinite wisdom. <laughs> okay, so the first comment was that when we started doing the first one, and as soon as I went to pick up my, as soon as I started picking up my arms, I realized, oh, I lifted my waist, you know, and I had a boom, boom. I mean, I, I've been noticing that more, but I mean, just, you know, immediately Good. before, Good. before even, uh, you know, doing hardly anything, I noticed that. Oh, yeah. That, that's a great, that's a great observation. Because that's a great observation because not a lot of people have that awareness, you know, to actually, no, no, I got to reset because we have so many, you know, deeply ingrained motions that pull us right out of uh, out of the uh, the three pillars and put us into an old pattern. So uh, that's great that you make the, made that observation. And and then uh, on the second one, um, when you're lifting, when we're uh, bringing our arms up, I tend to try and maybe I don't know if I want to say lead with my elbows a bit. Is that or is that what you would? kind of suggest or it's like it's like I try to you know as I'm lifting my arms I'm kind of feeling like the elbows are leading the whole part. I think it's a, that's a that's that's a good place to start good and then and then ah uh, you can go from there so you, you there's an optimal we, a few weeks ago we talked about the sweet spot okay right and, and like an optimal range of motion for for any any of these things and so it's your there's a power zone so for my elbows you know i'm you know i got a pretty wide range here you know but if i'm set you know if i'm set here i, I have more going for me than if i'm set up here right because then I'm, I'm starting to kink the hose here at my shoulder so i want to bring that down ah I mean, if you just try it right now, just, just, just lift your elbow and you can feel there's a certain point there where, where you are losing, losing your sweet spot. So there's a range here like that where I'm, I'm starting to feel it. So if I want to go further than that, so let's say I'm, I'm bringing my arm up, I bring my arm up, my elbow up to here, I'm, I'm still well within my, my comfort zone. And then, oh, I pick up my wrist and oh that's and then reach up from there then i can go really high and have maintain that sweet spot maintain that 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 power as we're doing it uh, you want to give, me, give a hand here dude so uh, so if um, you're pressing down on me right so if i'm coming up to here I've got, I'm pretty good up to this point. I'm pretty, pretty strong. If I try to go above that, I, I crumble, right? But if I, if I go here and I set my elbow there and then I reach up with my, my wrist and then I'm able to, to generate a lot more power. Whereas if I just, if I just try to, to lift up from the shoulder, I can't, I can't get any of that. So there's, you're kind of, honoring the sequence of the joints. So if, if I'm holding, holding down here, she just tries to pick up from there, not going to happen. But if she sets the elbow and then reaches with the wrist, then <laughs> I'm gone. So, uh, the, uh, so there's a, a sequence. So you activate, oh, you set the elbow, you reach with the wrist, you reach with the fingers, and then if she, you want to keep reaching upward like that, it's it's incredibly powerful when you do it that way. So if you honor the sequence. But, but you don't kink the shoulder when right. you when you switch from here to here, you keep that open. Yeah. So here, you, so you have to keep this all open. Right. But you keep it down here so you're like here. And once the, the wrist gets activated, then you reach up and you can go. <laughs> that's incredibly strong. If uh, if you if you honor that sequence, that sequentially activating the joints, then you can. It also looks a lot cooler, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is really what it's all about. But you know, if I, if I'm picking my arm up from my shoulder, there's there's that. But if I'm picking my arm up like this, you know, it's 
there's more grace as well as more power and it doesn't hurt which we like also so it's got it's 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 a whole package deal so you reach with set your elbow reach with the wrist and continue and you can you can get uh, you can get a, a much uh, bigger power zone and also ah, you can get this really nice graceful look to it as well cool Glad you're uh, over there. is there another question yeah um when you're talking about lifting the knee one i mean it seems like i could keep lifting and lifting and lifting is there a, a you know to a, point where where look, to a point where I'm going to look like a swan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of like that, yeah. <laughs> You're kind of kind of going for the Audrey Hepburn neck. Uh, <laughs> you want to? It's, it's like it's. Uh, I mean, what what you did just there? Right. That's huge. Right. I mean, it changed your whole energy. Right. To, to to do that, to, just to so if I'm like this, you know, if I go like this, it's a it's a different person. So you're you're like that. So is there a point where you stop doing it? Not really. There's a you know just keep because you're gonna forget. So just keep going back to it. You know, a thousand times, ten thousand times, whatever. Just keep on. Because every time you do that, every time you open that jade pillow gate, you are giving yourself a, a real boost. You are you're changing your structure every time you do that. You're increasing the efficiency of, of the flow of cerebral spinal fluid in your dural tube. So that increases your alertness but it also enhances every process in your body. It, by unkinking the medulla oblongata, which is a part of your reptile brain, which controls your heart rate and your breathing and, and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Uh, if you unkink that, then every, every system is going to function better. It also, your, um, your vagus nerve, runs through there. And if you unkink your vagus nerve, it goes throughout the whole system and it regulates a lot of your, uh, a lot of your internal processes. It, your breathing and your heart rate and your digestion and, and it also calms you down and does all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, it's, it's kind of a win-win, you know, by just by doing that. So as if there's one practice, like just, you know, just, Standing with your, you know, reaching with, re and it's not just lifting; it's reaching with the with the knee wand. You're actually trying to bump your head on the ceiling. You're gonna get taller. You're gonna, uh, your spine is gonna get longer. You're gonna get more space between the vertebrae because gravity is working against you. Uh, otherwise, gravity is pulling down and causing your spine to get compact as you get older. So mm, you do that. My spine is actually lengthened. And I have you know, a lot of space between my vertebrae as a result of, of decades of doing this. So like it, 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 it works. It's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. But my question was more, okay, so when I'm here, right, should I keep trying to go higher or just hold it at that point? Is my sort of, is more my question. I, I say do what you can do without tension. Okay. So that's, that's, that's it. You're just sort of allowing it to unwind and find its, its, its way. It's kind of like a, uh, uh, a sunflower reaching up, right? You're kind of, ah, uh, you're, you're, you're expanding upward. And how far is the sunflower going to go? It's going to go as far as the sunflower goes, you know, but it's, uh, uh, there is, it's, it's always has that, that phototropism there. It's always, reaching for the sun so it uh, that that reaching adds to the the elan vital the uh, the spirit of vitality that you have yeah rick 
Yes. Uh, when I do the plunger yes. and send away the chi, as soon as the hands come down again and the forefingers point at the earth, chi comes back in. Am I doing something wrong? Is that okay? Do that I need is, to do something that is internal? Perfect. Oh, that is perfect. That is perfect. Fresh chi. What's that? It's fresh chi. Yeah, it's, it, as Maria said, it's fresh chi. There so you go. That? So what's happening is it's sort of like priming a pump. You know, you're you're yeah. kind of you're creating a vacuum there, so you're discharging all the stuff that you've been accumulating. Because we never, you know, the, the, one of the, I think one of the biggest bill of goods that uh, a lot of internal practices uh, sell is that you store your chi. No, you can't store your chi anymore, and you can store your breath. You can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, it's, you know, it's, it's like. It's like vitamin C. <laughs> it kind of it, it comes in, it goes out, you know. There it you just, go. Yeah, that, and uh, uh, so you want to keep it, keep it moving through. So what we're doing with with these practices is we are circulating this fresh chi, and if to the extent that we are able to get into central equilibrium, and uh, we are constantly, we have this virtually infinite renewable source of energy that just keeps moving through. And so, you know, we, we're not, we're not getting stuck in, in stale chi. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Good. Good. Anybody else? Guillermo. Yes, Rick, uh, one quick question. Uh, we did some exercise a couple of weeks ago, some week, weeks ago, where we did Kind of moving in the opposite way, like yes. the hands forward and the body backwards. And in yeah. this sequence, we do kind of like going the same way. When we sing, the hands we sink ourselves. Is the first one to create gene, or what would you say is like the difference of this? Uh, short answer is energy is created by poles in opposition. Yes. Okay. So, so. And what makes the poles in opposition? Your consciousness. You consciously say, this pole and this pole, if I'm just holding my hands out there, there's no opposition. If I say, oh, I'm going to press my hands together, then uh -huh. we have poles in opposition. I'm going to pull my hands apart, poles in opposition. So I generate chi by, by doing that. So that's, that's the, the short answer. But if you... Uh, uh, if you remind me, maybe we'll do some more of that next week. We can uh, we can do some more of those exercises because those are those are cool. That's uh, that's usually under the I learned it under the heading of Ichuan, which is uh, you know mind boxing is the uh, is the, the the form of no form, um, and uh, so you learn to be able to create this these renewable potentials of energy. Uh, that you know by by identifying with that and then you create more and more so but remind me next time and we'll uh we'll we can we can do some more of that right? i will and one, one, one just thing in this last sequence we did we do the opposite not the opposite we move when we go down with the hands we sink with our yeah. whole body so it's not falls in opposition this is just us going with the flow? <laughs> uh, both work. You know, they, they do different things. And okay. uh, so it's more, it's more of a flowing kind of thing. But in, in so far as we are plugged into the big chi through central equilibrium and the three pillars, then we're getting, getting lots that way too. So different flavors and uh, different ways of, of, of uh, approaching it. Uh, I like to do them all and uh, keep, you know, playing around with that. And I think it, uh, it works. Cool. Thanks. You bet. Okay. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, great time. Thank you so much for showing up here. Uh, don't forget to tip your waiter and uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks, Rick. Thanks Maria. Bye, Thank you. Bye guys. Bye, everybody. Good